Good morning on the 20th day of January and welcome to the Scriptures, Thoughts and Ideas of the Daily Post for today. We hope this will be helpful and uplifting for you as you go through the day. We begin with the scripture from Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Reading the Bible in a year today, we move on through Genesis chapter 49 and 50 and Matthew chapter 13 verses 31 to 58. The thoughts of the day. God doesn't love us in spite of our faults. He loves us through them as if they didn't exist. Amazing. And very fortunate for us. It's not such a miracle when we believe in God as when we realize that God believes in us. Another miracle. The reason most people never reach their goals is that they don't define them or ever seriously consider them as believable or achievable. Winners can tell you where they are going, what they plan to do along the way, and who will be sharing the adventure with them. The motivational thought for the day, be a craftsman in speech, that thou mayest be strong, for the strength of one is the tongue, and speech is mightier than all fighting. And we'll see that that relates to today's uh, thoughts around the scripture of James. On this day, in 1887 on this day, New Zealand annexed the Kermadec Islands in the Pacific and the U.S. Senate approved leasing Pearl Harbor in Hawaii as its main Pacific naval base. In 1910, on this day, Canberra became the capital of Australia. In 1913, in London, the first Chelsea Flower Show opened on this day. 1936, the death of George V of England who was succeeded by Edward VIII. Edward VIII abdicated 325 days later and before his coronation because of his insistence in marrying American divorcee Wallace Simpson. In 1942 on this day, Nazi officials meet to organize the extermination of the Jews. During the One Sea Conference in Berlin, the Nazis discussed what they called the, quote, final solution to the Jewish question, unquote. In 1954, at Rogers Pass in Man Montana, a temperature of minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit, or 57 degrees centigrade minus, made a U.S. record for 48 states of the U.S. at that time. In 1958, Transatlantic, Commonwealth Transatlantic Expedition, led by Vivian Fuchs, reached the South Pole. And in 1997 on this day, Her Majesty's Royal Yacht Britannia began her final voyage before being decommissioned, and the voyage was to Hong Kong. The personal story of the day, with good intentions. The easiest wrongs to identify and correct are those of others. By nature, we are both fault finders and fault avoiders. We can see the errors of others much more easily than our own and manage to expect change from them while finding excuses for ourselves. When the Pharisees, see John chapter 8 and verse 3, brought an immoral woman before Jesus, their intent was to pin him on the horns of a dilemma. How could he, a friend of sinners, condemn her? On the other hand, how could he, a righteous man, fail to keep the law? Their focus was on Jesus, as they not only set up, 
but sprung their trap. When we read this scripture, we notice that the man involved in this act of adultery was never brought before Jesus. Perhaps the adultery itself was part of this setting of the trap and he was part of the plot. Providing an opportunity to catch the woman in the act, which is pretty unusual if you think about it. Then the unexpected occurred. Instead of answering their question, Jesus pinned the Pharisees with this statement, as we read in verse 7. If any of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. No stones were thrown, as we know. Their error was exposed. The fault finders could not avoid their own faults. It is interesting that the first to leave were the older ones. They were men who knew there was no excuse and no use in denying their own sins to Jesus. Seeing the wrong in others is easy. Seeing the wrong in ourselves is harder, but needed. There are times when we confront others biblically regarding their sins, but we must always confront ourselves as well. Remember, we always judge others by their deeds, but we only ever judge ourselves by our intentions, and there is a huge difference. The devotional thoughts for the day. The first, taming the untamable. The scripture from James chapter 3 and verse 8 with references from James chapter 3 verses 3 to 8. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Watching horses race is a vivid way to see the illustration that James uses in this passage. These powerful animals gallop around the track at speeds of about 40 kilometers an hour and they're controlled and directed by riders whose weight is a fraction of the weight of the horse. How can a 50 kilo jockey make a several hundred kilo horse obey him? Well, through pulling at the reins that pull at the bit in the horse's mouth. In verse 2, James says that the ability to control our tongues is a sign of maturity. It also signifies that we are able to control the rest of our bodies, which means that we are not following our evil desires. Clearly, mastery over our tongues has implications for our spiritual health. Our verses today contain two illustrations about this relationship be controlling by con between controlling the tongue and controlling the rest of the body. Body is used here as a metaphor for all of our activities. Just as the small bit in the horse's mouth and the small rudder of a ship exert influence and control over the direction either will go, so also the tongue can set the whole course of a person's life. The problem is that the tongue is often an outlet for our evil desires or anger. It reflects what is truly in our hearts, whether generosity and mercy or favoritism and pride. Apart from God, the tongue is untamable. But we who are following Christ have the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to keep our tongues and our whole bodies conformed to God's desires. A lifestyle of wisdom and pleasing God begins with controlling our tongues. No wonder the first thing God does when we receive the Holy Spirit is to give us a new tongue, the power to tame the untamable. Praise the Lord. Wonderful words. The second thought, practice your prayer. And again, we're still in the book of Daniel, and this time chapter 6 and verse 10 for the scripture. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did 
aforetime. During the Revolutionary War, a soldier who had crawled into the brush was caught and accused of communicating with the enemy. His plea was that he had only gone in there to pray. The gruff commanding officer said, Soldier, are you in the habit of spending hours in private prayer? Yes, sir, the private replied. Then get down on your knees and pray now, thundered the officer. Expecting soon to meet his saviour, the soldier prayed a simple yet inspired prayer. When he finished, the officer said, You may go. I believe your story. If you had not been off on a drill, you couldn't have done so well at review. Daniel was facing a similar crisis. His enemies had convinced King Darius to sign a decree making it a crime to pray to anyone but him, that is King Darius, for a period of 30 days. But Daniel also was no beginner of prayer. Long before he found himself in this major predicament, he had been at the, in the habit of praying three times a day with his window open towards Jerusalem. When this decree put his life in danger, it was only natural that he would turn to prayer. Prayer got him into trouble, but prayer also would get him out of trouble. For many people, prayer is something you do only during a critical situation. If you're in trouble, you pray. Otherwise, you leave God alone. But this is foolish. Only the person who has developed an aptitude for prayer during the mundane times of life is able to pray effectively in a crisis. It takes a lot of practice to perform well under pressure, even in prayer. Don't wait until trouble comes before you pray. Make it a daily habit. Let your voice be so familiar to God that he knows what you want even before you ask. Again, wise words. The facts of the day. In Philadelphia, based on an act of 1760, you can't put pretzels in bags. In Texas, it's against the law for anyone to have a pair of pliers in his or her possession. <laughs> and the closing thought for the day, be what you want the world to be. Thank you for joining us today. We do hope that uh, you'll find the scriptures, thoughts and ideas helpful, uplifting and maybe challenging. And we hope that you'll come back tomorrow for some more. In the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.